Hello, welcome everybody to today's webinar. My name is Jane Stevens and I am the training manager here at Zolo. Today we are going to be talking about working with sellers. So I am going to do a overview of the entire process and I will focus on the CMA just a little bit. That really could be a whole webinar all on its own, uh, but I will highlight a few things because I know that that comes up quite often, right? How to pull comparables, how to price a property. So we will talk about it briefly here today. And then of course, if you want a deeper dive, let me know. We can definitely add that to the training calendar. Before we get started, I do just want to say hello. Welcome everybody again to today's webinar. I'd love to hear from you uh, so that I get to know you guys a little bit better. Even though this is a virtual uh, webinar, it is nice for me to hear from you guys. So I'm just going to launch this poll. I'd love to know when you got your license uh, as, as well as what your experience level is. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you haven't, you know, done a lease before or worked with buyers or sellers. It's just good for me to know where you're at so I can tailor this training to you guys. So I know that new agents are always joining Zolo. So again, welcome. <laughs> I, I am here to, to help you guys uh, get started. So uh, while you are answering those questions, I will just share with you guys the calendar, which of course is available to you in the workplace group under the training channel. And uh, as you can see here, every Monday and Wednesday, we always offer the new agent orientation. So, uh, you know, even if you, if you have been with Zolo for, you know, a few months, join us, come for a refresher. We talk about the CRM on Monday. So what is it that the Zolo bot is looking for uh, to keep giving you leads? So that's important if you want to keep getting those leads, uh, just knowing what the Zolo bot is looking for to keep that flow going. And then on Wednesday, we talk about web forms and authenticide. So uh, we've switched it up a little bit so that now if you are brand new to uh, Zolo, we do have a mock offer to lease that you have to prepare in order to start your leads. So we literally walk through an offer to lease. So if you guys um, you know, need experience with that or need to even upload your mock offer, uh, please join me for web forms. And then of course, we do talk about what the deals department is looking for once you do have that accepted offer, whether it's lease, or a purchase. Uh, working with sellers is what we're talking about today. So we do have a lineup on Tuesdays. And then on Thursdays, we usually have guest speakers. So I do have them here joining me uh, tomorrow. No, day after tomorrow, Thursday. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be talking about FinTrack. So I know it's not the most exciting form, but it is something that you guys need to know. And a lot of questions come up when you are filling out that FinTrack form. It's actually not as overwhelming as it appears to be. So join us for that. And then of course, Friday, we have call labs, which is great. Again, if you are new to real estate and you're nervous about those initial phone calls, not sure what to say, role play with your colleagues. It's a safe space. So definitely join the call lab. It is a four week program. So, uh, you know, jump in this week if you haven't started from the very beginning, but just so you know, uh, it is designed to really develop your skills over that four week period. So there you have it. I'm just going to keep admitting people into the room. Thank you so much uh, for filling out this, completing this poll. It looks like almost half of you have um, answered these questions. So I will share the results with you in just a second. Maybe I'll give the people who just joined us a couple of seconds here to fill in these questions or to complete this questionnaire. But uh, it looks like half of you have been licensed for less than one year. So that's great. That means I have a bunch of, of new, new realtors. So that's always exciting. Uh, welcome to the business. Welcome to Zolo. We will definitely keep you busy here. Um, so because of that, it looks like, you know, there are a handful of you that haven't done any leases yet or worked with any buyers or sellers. And of course, that's no problem. That's what we're here to do. We're here to help you. Uh, but I do have um, about equal amounts who have done more than five leases, uh, more than 10 buyer transactions. And since we're talking about sellers, today. This is the one I'm really interested in um, seeing. So it looks like, again, hmm, yeah, the majority of you haven't worked with sellers yet. Uh, but then the second uh, runner up there is that I have a few of you who have done over 10 uh, selling transactions. So that's great. You know, there's an expression in real estate, um, a list to last. So definitely, if you can focus on listings, the buyers do come as a result of that. So let me end the poll there. Let me share those results with you guys. So you can take a look. So again, thank you to those of you who answered. And so again, today we are talking about working with sellers. I'm going to stop sharing these results. 
And let's jump into it because of course there's so much to talk about. Before I actually do really jump into it, just a reminder that you can find all of this content in the Academy and I switch up these topics every week. So uh, today, as I said, we will be focusing more on the CMA part of this process, but because I know a lot of you maybe haven't attended this webinar before, I will be trying to fit in as much information as possible about the entire process, starting from that initial conversation all the way through to closing uh, your first listing. All right, so there's the Academy. Um, it's always available to you guys 24 seven if you do want this information on demand. So let's get started. And of course, please talk to me, please interact. Let me know if you guys have questions, if you need me to slow down, um, or if you want me to go back over something, this is meant to be interactive. So please chat with me. And uh, if you'd like, even you can raise your hand and I can unmute you and we can have an actual conversation. All right, so here's the agenda. This is what we're gonna talk about. I am going to introduce a few strategies. I've, I've talked about this before, I've tweaked it a little bit for today, but three strategies for you to get listings in a low inventory market, which is what we're in right now. So if you are brand new to real estate, even if you are still working on your initial five leases here at Zolo, yes, you need to do your five leases in order for us to turn on your lease leads. Uh, and then of course your buyer leads after you've done those five transactions, but you are licensed, you are a licensed realtor. So you can start advertising, putting yourself out there, trying to to get listings, um, you know, outside of the Zolo system before, you know, you start receiving those buyer leads. So, you know, no reason to, to wait for that. So we'll talk about a few strategies there. And then of course, I'm going to talk to you about scripts. I'm not going to get too much into that. Again, the call lab is there for you guys uh, to participate in, but, uh, and of course there's Google, <laughs> everything's on Google. You can find a whole bunch of different scripts that will help you have conversations with sellers. Um, you know, even if you are wanting to do cold calls to generate uh, seller leads, then, you know, there are scripts for that. So there's a ton of information out there, but I will, you know, highlight the ingredients of what you should have in any kind of a script. <laughs> and then of course, we're going to talk about the CMA. So that's kind of going to be the focus today. I will briefly go over the listing presentation, including a pre-listing uh, presentation. I'm just going to, you know, high level talk about that uh, because it is important for you guys to have that in place because when you do uh, talk to sellers, you want to, of course, show them what it is that you're going to do for them. And again, you know, focusing on the fact that maybe not all of you have done you know, many listings or had any listings before, how can you still create a, a listing presentation that leaves a good impression, even though you don't have that experience, right? So um, really, you would want to focus on the process and educating them on the process so that they, of course, trust you, right? That's really going to be why people pick to work with anybody. It's because they know, like, and trust them. So that should be the focus of your listing presentation if you don't have any sales, you know, in your in your track record. <laughs> so marketing the property, posting it on MLS, how to deal with offers. So there's always so much to talk about with um, sellers. So let's jump into it. All right, let's talk about how to generate listings. So first of all, we're so fortunate here at Zolo, we do have leads coming into our CRM all of the time, whether they're coming from the Zolo website or the Zolo app. These are usually leads coming at us because they're interested in a property, right? They're interested in a property to go look at, which you know we assume then that they are buyers. But it's in that conversation with those buyers that you discover that they do have a property to sell. So even though they're coming at you as a buyer, as a potential buyer, uh, they may also be a seller. So, you know, just make sure that during that initial conversation with these leads that yes, you're talking to them about buying the property. When would they like to see the property, making sure they're not already working with a realtor and then, you know, asking them if they, if they need to sell before purchasing anything, right? So this goes all into that conversation with the buyer. So uh, you want to be finding out, you know, their motivation, their timeline. And uh, as I said, you know, do you have a property that you need to sell in order to to move to this particular property. Sometimes buyers will say, yes, I need to sell my condo in order to buy this townhouse. Other times people will say, well, no, I have a condo, but I don't need to sell that, I'll rent it out, right? So you just know uh, who, who you're talking to, what they have, what they might need your help with. Um, so that is really how you can uncover the seller leads in the Zolo CRM. So they'll come at you as a buyer lead. So just make sure that you ask that question because of course you wanna capture you know, both sides of the deal if you can, right? You list their property, you help them purchase them, thing or vice versa. 
that can be a conversation to have what to do first. Uh, and really it depends on the market and it depends on the client's comfort level. So it's up to you um, what you recommend, but uh, definitely having a discussion with them about what's happening in the market right now. You know, this being a seller's market, it's a good idea, I would say, to list your property first because you're in the driver's seat, you're in control. You can ask buyers to give you a long closing period, which should give you enough time to find a property to buy. Um, in addition to that, you might even want to recommend to you know, your sellers that in addition to having a long closing period, that you also have a clause in the contract um, allowing you to extend the closing date if necessary. So again, just knowing what you can recommend to your clients, uh, to your seller clients, will give them confidence that you know they're they're going to be well served. Even if you don't have, as I said, a hundred homes that you've sold in the past, or even ten homes that you've sold in the past, as long as you can kind of guide them on the process, give them some good suggestions, think outside of the box a little bit. Um, you know, that's what we're here to discuss today, so that you can pass on those you know those tips and tricks to your sellers. So there are some other ways that you can generate some listings, and this is a very powerful and very cheap <laughs> way to find sellers. So this is something that uh, I hear works. Lots of other, you know, realtors have done this. You know, I've heard from, you know, realtors here at Zolo who have tried this and it's worked, uh, real estate friends, that they literally write a handwritten note. They might want to put it in, you know, an envelope that is also handwritten. Um, and they deliver it. They go around their neighborhood and they deliver a, a handwritten note, just basically saying that you have a buyer who's interested in a property uh, like theirs, right? And so you can introduce the family, you can introduce who your buyers are, you know, you could, you know, you could really have those buyers, you could have that buyer kind of in your mind as a demographic. Um, but you can write a letter to sellers saying, you know, that you have buyers who are looking for a specific type of property in a particular area, uh, such as their home, and uh, you're writing to see if they've had any thoughts of selling. So, you know, it's it's a handwritten note, it's way more effective. I find uh, the feedback that I get about this is that it's, um, it's actually read, whereas a lot of the direct mail marketing that we get, most people just toss that away. And it is really, really expensive. If you ever looked into direct mail, creating those postcards and getting them sent out to a specific farm area, yes, you're sending out thousands, but it's very expensive. And it's, again, kind of a long, um, haul, right? Like you have to do it consistently over a long period of time, whereas this can be more targeted, more specific, and it's free. If you handwrite it yourself, you know, you buy the envelopes, you stick the, uh, the handwritten note in there and deliver them. I've heard from some agents that they've, you know, invested in some fluorescent looking envelopes so that it really stands out in their, in their mailbox or, you know, under the doormat, whatever it is that you're going to do. But a handwritten note, just letting the, these potential sellers, so these homeowners know that you have a buyer or buyers that are looking in this particular pocket and they're looking for, you know, whatever it is that, uh, you know, matches that property type, you're reaching out to them. So, you know, it could be a double car garage. It could be an end unit in a townhouse complex, whatever it is. And you just target those specific properties and hopefully you get the call back. So of course, don't forget to leave your contact information. So these buyer love letters, um, these buyer letters are a good idea. Great way to generate listings. And then of course uh, you can, Double, double your efforts by maybe investing in a, a, a system that gives you uh, phone numbers. So yes, there's Canada 411, that is free. I actually haven't used that service in a really long time. But if you invest in something like Telelisting, that's another one that's available uh, you know, to everybody, really, if you purchase it. And uh, this one is great because you can just search by postal code and then you can reach out to you know, neighbors of a particular property that has just sold. So I'm sharing with you here a script that you might want to use if you did want to do this type of cold calling. So it is cold calling, um, you know, again, at Zolo, we get much warmer leads. We know exactly what property they're looking at. We know that they're interested in buying something because they're calling us about a particular property. In this case, we don't know, right? We're just kind of looking up um, a neighborhood using the postal code. So do you have... A, a neighborhood that you've chosen, a property that you've chosen that has recently sold and reach out to, you know, these neighbors, <laughs> these homeowners in a particular neighborhood uh, with a script such as this. So you can introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Jane with Zolo.ca. I'm calling because a home down your street just sold for X amount of money or in X amount of days 
or with X amount of offers. So whatever information you have, the trick with this one is you don't wanna be calling uh, these neighbors with information that is old, right? So as soon as it hits MLS, as soon as a property sells, you see it on MLS, before it actually you know, goes public on sites like Zolo, uh, you know, maybe that's kind of your window that you reach out to neighbors, right? In that particular area, and you let them know the information that they don't already have, right? So let them know. You know, there's a property that just sold recently. That's what I'm calling you about. I have buyers who are looking for a particular property in this area. They've missed out on the one that just sold. Have you thought about selling? And if not, because, you know, you have to be prepared for the no. If not, would you mind uh, if I reach out to you in the future, right? And hopefully you capture their email address. It's something I always recommend is having some sort of newsletter so that you can reach out to people systematically. So not only the people who are new in your CRM and the Zolo system, but people maybe that you're reaching out uh, if you do decide to cold call. So this is just another idea on how to generate listings in a low inventory market, which is, you know, what we're in. So again, a couple of ideas so far, you know, sending a buyer letter to properties. So hand delivering that handwritten note, uh, cold calling in that area, investing in something like telelisting. And last but not least, maybe looking up properties on Kijiji that are posted on there directly by landlords. So, you know, landlords, you know, you can reach out to them and you can ask them, you know, it's a seller's market, have you considered selling? Um, but maybe more strategic, maybe a little bit more of a hook, um, because, you know, if, if they wanted to sell, they, they would have probably reached out to a realtor. Um, so if they say no, then just, again, the, the newsletter idea, maybe offer them uh, a newsletter, a weekly or a monthly newsletter that you prepare to investors with a list of hot investment properties that you have hand selected, right? And then just ask them, would you like to receive these emails? So this is kind of you creating a bit of a database of investors. So you're reaching out uh, to landlords who have posted their properties directly on Kijiji uh, for rent, and you're reaching out to them, you know, not just asking them if, them if they want to sell that property, but hey, I have a list that I send out to investors every week or every month. Would you like to receive that? I handpick some good investment properties. And if there's anything of interest, let me know and I'm happy to show it to you, right? So you, if you do that consistently over time and you build a bit of a database of landlords who are usually investors, uh, you know, some of them only have one investment property, but some of them will have multiple. So, you know, if you do add them to this database and to this newsletter that you're sending out, uh, that should generate listing leads for you. So there are some ideas because we can't talk about working with sellers if we don't have any sellers. <laughs> so yes, the Zolo system will give you sell sellers disguised as buyers initially. And then there are some ideas as well. Um, so yeah, so question coming in. I thought you were not allowed to message or call random people. So yes, the telelisting uh, service that I recommended does incorporate the do not call list. So um, I believe they're there, but they would just be in red. So you wouldn't call those people. Um, otherwise, yeah, you can call people, um, you know, and let them know, hopefully information that's of value to them. All right, so again, I won't get it too much into scripts because there is a bunch of information online that you can find. And of course here at Zolo also, we do offer the call lab. So that's a really great space um, for you to practice and just role play with other colleagues who are also just starting out. So, you know, different scenarios will be presented to you. Um, so let's just quickly talk about this initial conversation and what ingredients you should have in your script. Uh, before we jump into that, let me just answer the question in the chat. So telelisting is uh, what I was recommending there. If you reach out to them, I believe it's $300 for the year. Um, so if you break that up, it doesn't sound so overwhelming. Uh, that's probably the most costly thing I, I ever recommend. I like to recommend things that are free. Canada 411 is something that uh, you might be able to use. I haven't used that one in a long time, but uh, check that one out too. Let, and let me know, let me know if that works in the way that uh, yeah, I'm suggesting. Awesome, yeah, no problem, my pleasure. All right, so let's get into scripts. So um, again, we're not gonna really talk about a script, but talk about, let's talk about those ingredients that you should have in any script, right? You wanna have a goal, you wanna have an outcome. So, you know, going back to that example of reaching out to landlords on Kijiji, um, you know, if they say that, no, they're not interested in selling the property that they have listed for rent, um, you know, maybe having that goal of capturing their email address, right? So that you can target them in future, 
email newsletters, you know, targeted to investors with a list of hot investment properties. So that might be your goal, right? Um, so, I mean, hopefully the goal is to meet up with a prospect or secure a listing, but you know, it could even be just a capturing email. That would be a win, right? Because you're going to put them into a system. So have a goal, be positive, be upbeat on your call, you know, listen back to your own calls. That's another thing that you can do here at Zolo is um, listen back. So if a lead comes in and you answer your call or you you answer your phone, um, you can listen back to that conversation. How did you sound? If you were on the road, you know, did you sound distracted? Did you engage or did you just say that you were going to call back? Did you end up calling back? Um, you know, how did you sound on the phone? So <laughs> we can often be very critical of ourselves. So it's a good coaching tool. So listen back to your calls and see how you sound. Be enthusiastic about working with them in your market. Like just be upbeat and positive. Smile on the phone. I know I say that uh, sometimes too. I haven't um, said that in a while, but it makes a huge difference. You hear people who are smiling. Um, you know, they're again, it's just positive energy. So always answer your phone professionally and just keep that upbeat energy throughout. Empathy. So even on an initial call, you want to share your prospects frustrations, you know, so I mean, there's, there's always going to be somebody who you talk to who isn't as happy as you are <laughs> on the phone. And, uh, you know, all you can do is really just I, I understand I know you're busy I know this market is really frustrating, right, so you can definitely empathize and then maybe also relate right so yes i understand this market is really frustrating but here's what we can do to still find properties right again be creative think outside the box yes everything right now seems to be going into multiple offers but there's still properties believe it or not that aren't selling right maybe the sellers had an unrealistic expectation at the time that they listed and now that they haven't gotten any offers and they've been sitting on the market for two weeks maybe they're now a little bit more realistic. So if you have somebody who says to you, I don't wanna compete, I don't wanna get into that uh, you know, multiple offer situation, I totally understand, I know it's competitive, it's, you know, it, it's difficult to know what the sellers are expecting when buyers are you know, bidding uh, well over market value, but there are still properties that we can look at that have been sitting on the, pro on, on the market for a while, we can reach out and see if they now have realistic expectations and we can go in without that competition. So don't tell uh, you know, somebody that uh, to wait, but you know, empathize and try to still convert. Ask questions about their current situation, what their timeline is, all of that stuff. Um, you know, so make sure that you are engaging with them, um, asking questions and then providing value. So, you know, again, offering that solution, right? Letting them know what's happening in the market, how you can get around certain situations if, they, if they're not wanting to compete. I'm sort of transitioning into, you know, a buyer conversation. But yeah, if you have, um, you know, a seller, which is what we're talking about right now, concerned about, again, you know, well, what if I sell my house and then I have nowhere to go? right? I sell my house for top dollar and now I have to spend top dollar. Again, you know, you can use that same idea with them that I just presented, you know, in talking to buyers, you know, there are still properties that are sitting on the market, we can approach those sellers and see if their expectations are a little bit lower, and you know, not having to compete. So it's still a conversation you can have with sellers if they're concerned about where they're going to go. All right. So, um, of course, this is not a CRM training. So um, always update all of your activity. I know you guys know that. <laughs> but let's talk about our CMA. So if you do have a conversation with a buyer, turns out they do have a condo, let's say, to sell, um, what do you do with that, right? Uh, you're going to have to do a few things. You're going to have to prepare for hopefully what will be a listing presentation. So a listing presentation is usually done in person. I've heard of a lot of realtors, you know, due to COVID, uh, now even sort of after the fact, they are still implementing the the Zoom presentations, right? Um, still, of course, you know, you wanna be as much as possible doing these listing presentations in person, because of course that's when you'll get, you know, a real idea of what they've done, what upgrades they've done, what renovations they've done to the property since they've been there. Um, but of course you'll want to come to that listing presentation with a comparative, a comparative market analysis, right? Meaning that you have looked at the market, you have uh, taken a look at what is currently active. So what their competition is, what has sold and what has been terminated. So CMA, I'm gonna switch my screen so I can actually show you in TREB. So I'm using uh, Matrix and I will show you how to pull some comparables for a condo. Uh, but in the meantime, 
really the takeaway is to have three active properties that you can show your sellers, um, you know, because that's going to be their competition. That's what they're up against. Uh, showing them the, the photos of each of those properties as well. So I like to recommend, yes, printing them out, but also having an electronic version so that you can show them the three properties that are available for sale and you can go through the photos and see, okay, are all of these staged? If they're all staged, we're going to need to stage ours, right? So knowing what your competition is, so you can not only, you know, compete with them, but, you know, stand out. So the CMA, you'll, you'll want to know the three active listings. You'll want to know what has recently sold because that is going to give you an indication of price range. And then you're going to also want to know what was terminated. So what didn't sell, right? And right now in a seller's market, we do see a lot of the uh, multiple offers and listing agents, you know, sometimes pricing a property low, you know, that $899, $999, but really the seller's expectation is, you know, $1.3, right? So if you see the history there that, you know, multiple properties have been listed for $999, um, you know, and they're not selling for $1.3, they're being terminated, then maybe that's not a pricing strategy you use, right? Also, if you see that terminated listings have been listed too high, they didn't sell at 1.4 or 1.5, then you know that's too high, especially if you see that those properties have been adjusted and priced lower after the fact. So lots of information to uncover when you're doing a CMA. So this is, um, available to you, of course, in the Academy as well. So how to review comps and create a CMA. And this is just a screenshot of uh, matrix. So Treb's matrix. So you do want to go back. You do want to select sold properties uh, between now and especially in a seller's market. Uh, you don't want to go too far back. You know, what happened in January is not relevant anymore, right? If we're in June. So you want to go back um, 60, 90 days and uh, hopefully there's some activity there for you to look at. So. Yeah, before we jump into the rest, let me just switch my screen. And in the meantime, let me know if you have any questions. Oh, I just need to do, need to log into my Trev system. I don't know how many times a day I do that. <laughs> so let me just pull up my authenticator code and let me properly share my screen. If you guys can let me know, uh, whether or not you can see my screen, that would be great. All right. Let me see where my chat is. Hopefully you guys can see it. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. So here's the trick. When you are listing properties, of course, you know, you're going to be asked to price a property that is not already on the market. Hopefully you have a situation where it has previously been listed so you can look at you know the photos the layout the condition of the property so um we're gonna do um i've already pulled up an example here so i'm ready for you guys <laughs> we are gonna do um a condo uh 908 so we've spoken to somebody who has a condo at uh, 65 spears in oakville and their condo number is 908 so of course we're going to unselect the active box because we want all of the results for this particular property only. And so we're going to click on results, which will let us know um, that it did sell way back in, when did it sell? 2017 and it sold for 395,000. So that's also really good to know. Uh, you know, you want to make sure that you are, you, you know what the seller purchased the the property for, and um, you want to make sure that you are suggesting, you know, a price that, you know, will entice them to sell. So hopefully the market will allow for that. All right. So we've got 65 Spears Road, unit 908. One of the things you do want to do before jumping really into the comparables is going to property line. And, uh, and really property line is just a, um, a step to get to geo warehouse because you need to confirm who the owner is, right? Because when you are doing a listing presentation, when you do arrive at the condo um, to show comparables, you wanna make sure you're talking to whoever it is that owns it. So um, unfortunately, oops, um, in Matrix, there isn't a, a button for Geo Warehouse directly on MLS. You do have to click through property line and then Geo Warehouse is hidden all the way down at the bottom, this tiny little icon. If you click on that, it will take you to Geo Warehouse for this particular property. 
And if it doesn't, you can always copy and paste that pin number. Yeah, see, it doesn't do that. Uh, the roll number up here, you can copy and paste that into Geo Warehouse so that you can find out who the owner is. So you would go to the property report and that tells you who the owner is, who is hopefully uh, the person you've been chatting with. <laughs> All right, so that's the first thing you wanna do. Um, how to include a property tax column on the display option, single line presentation. Awesome, okay, yeah. So if you have questions about how to uh, customize your search criteria, um, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. First of all, I just wanted to show you how to pull up the subject property. So in this case, uh, we're pulling comparables for a condo that thankfully has been listed before on MLS. So before you even attend the listing presentation, you're already gonna get a sneak peek at the property, right? Because you're able to pull up the photos here and browse through the layout. So it gives you a good sense um, as to the condition. So, you know, of course, you might want to ask them before the listing presentation, even over the phone, have you done any renovations? Have you done any upgrades? We're going to assume in this case that nope, they've kept everything the same since 2017. The kitchen still has the same stainless steel appliances. The cupboards are in good condition. They haven't changed the flooring in any way. Um, it is a two bedroom condo with one bathroom. Uh, so we're just clicking through the photos to again, give ourselves a sneak peek. So it has a balcony, it has a locker, it has a parking stall. So those are gonna be things that we want to keep in mind when we are uh, pulling comparables. We want to compare apples to apples and not apples to oranges. So we don't wanna be looking at you know, unit 908, which is our subject property and comparing it to the penthouse that's sold, right? So we wanna be comparing apples to apples. Uh, let me see, I think I've got somebody in the chat. Um, how to check living space size of a house. Yeah, okay, great, awesome. Okay, so let's, let's do that. So, here, what we know so far, we've taken a sneak peek at the photos, and then we do know that this is a two bedroom condo, it's one bath, and thankfully this one also has the square footage. Now, if it didn't have the square footage, you might want to go ahead, you could ask the seller if they know what the square footage is. You know, usually they know, um, but in some cases I've had, you know, sellers think that it's larger than it actually is. So, you know, anytime you are actually going to list a property, you do want to verify, of course, the the square footage. And you can do that again by clicking on property line, which I've already opened up here. So I'll just switch to this tab and you can find out uh, residential details by selecting the detail report, or you can find out just the floor area by selecting this report. So it does end up costing you money. It costs you $5 or it costs you $9, depending on the report that you choose. But this is a super important step. You do not want to be advertising the wrong square footage, right? Whether it's more or whether it's less, you want it to be accurate. So do invest in the residential report, whether it's just the floor area or the detailed report um, so that you do have that on your listing. I know a lot of listings don't have square footage. I'm glad this one does. Um, and I would highly recommend that anytime you have a listing that you always include the square footage. And then sure, make a note in the remarks that the buyer has to verify the measurements, but you know, do include it there for people to know how big this unit is. So we know uh, how big this particular unit is, two bedrooms, one bath, 600 square feet, um, and it's on the ninth floor. That's gonna make a difference too. When you're listing a condo, again, you don't wanna be comparing a ninth floor unit to the penthouse or to something that's on the 18th floor with a better view. Um, so yeah, definitely you know, making sure that, again, you're comparing what is relevant. So now that we have the subject property, what you could do is you could actually add this to your cart. Um, you know, this is something I wasn't planning on mentioning, but um, adding this to carts will just keep you organized. So you can create a new cart. You can say listing presentation, right? Uh, I'm just gonna select myself here. And then, so now you've added that subject property for your listing presentation, just so that you don't have to search for it later, you've cut, you're saving it in a cart. So now let's go to uh, search condo and other units. And now we wanna see what has recently sold. Again, let's take a look at what has sold in the last 90 days. And again, we wanna make sure that we are looking at the same building. Uh, in this particular building um, has two, building side by side. So if there's 65 spheres, 55 spheres, um, we want to make sure that we are looking at only two bedroom condos with one bathroom, right? And then so that's going to give us a total of 11 matches. So if we click on results, 
uh, this is the standard view that you're going to see. So the single line, the member single line. Now, again, uh, somebody was asking here about default. So if you want to change uh, what you see and what you don't see, you can manage your display or, you know, set or clear defaults. Now, there is kind of a way to get in there. Um, uh, yeah. So to answer your question, let me just see what the question was. Uh, display property tax column. Yeah, so you just have to hover above the columns if you want to add anything. And you have to wait for this like hand icon to appear. Nope, not the hand icon, this cross icon to appear. And then you can remove columns and insert columns. So if you're looking for that, you can go ahead and insert whichever column you'd like, and then you can save that as a particular view. So I've, got, I've already created a view that I like, so I've called it properties of interest because that includes the sold date for me. So I'm gonna go ahead, and these are all of the recently sold uh, units that have two bedrooms, one bath, and I'm gonna click on sold date twice so that the most recently sold property is up at the top. So I can see that unit 701 sold for 535, and I can see unit 1905, 1105, 408, and, four, and 910. So because the unit that we are going to be potentially listing is on the ninth floor, 910 is gonna be a really good comparable, right? It sold for 535. It did sell last month, so that's actually pretty recent. Uh, so 535, and then even the last one that sold 701 also sold for 535. So we're really lucky with this one. We probably know what we're going to list this uh, condo for. Uh, we're probably going to suggest 535. Uh, but typically speaking, if there was a range, you know, I would just give the range to the client, right? And, uh, you know, we would strategize together on a, on a price point instead of, you know, giving, giving an exact number. You know, it's the same thing when you're working with buyers, right? And you're submitting an offer. You don't want to say, well, you should offer 1.2, right? You want to give a range and then discuss where they're comfortable offering. So uh, to provide the information and strategize with them. Um, let me see. So 535 is probably going to be our list, our list price. And then as you can see, lo and behold, down here at the bottom, we have unit 225 uh, that is currently on the market, two bedrooms, one bath. And guess what it's listed for? 535. <laughs> so let's click on that. And of course, this is something that you're going to want to print out. You're going to want to show to your client because take a look at the finishings here, right? It does look like they've staged it. So if you are going to go ahead and list unit 908, you are going to want to show this property to your seller. You're going to want to say, you know, you're going to want to recommend staging. You're probably going to recommend that 535 price point, And then you can go ahead and list the property. All right. So those are the comparables I wanted to show you. Let me just jump back into um, my PowerPoint and I'll get back to your questions as well. All right, so let me know, where was I? When I do this backwards, I have to do this backwards. Okay, so let me see what uh, questions I have coming in. Let me know what you think so far, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> awesome. All right. So now that you have prepared the comparables and uh, you know that you're going to list this property for 535, it should be staged. You're going to go in with those recommendations. Uh, you know, as I said, you do want to attend at the property with at least three active. In this case, there's only one that's relevant. Uh, three sold properties. In this case, there's a couple that are relevant. Um, and then, you know, terminated listings, which we didn't actually take a look at, but pretty self-explanatory there. So. Let's talk about what to do next. So I like to recommend before we jump into the listing presentation that you do have a follow-up email. So while you're pulling comparables and you know while you're waiting for that listing presentation, which you know might happen tomorrow or the day after or over the weekend, send them some information, send them an email, introduce yourself, you know, give them some, some tidbits about what they're gonna see in your listing presentation. You're basically starting to sell yourself early, selling your services early, right? letting them know why they should work with you, introducing yourself so that you know they get to know you a little bit better. Maybe you're providing examples of properties you've sold if you have that. If not, focus on the educational piece, focus on you know sharing the process with them, um, sharing testimonials that you might have, even if they are lease clients, right? They don't 
usually it doesn't say what uh, what you help them with, uh, but you can share testimonials. Absolutely. Again, if you don't have a lot of uh, properties that you've previously sold, you might want to focus on your marketing plan, right? Like what is it that you're going to do to really market their property? You know, you can talk about Zolo, which definitely you would do in the listing presentation. So this is kind of like highlights. Think of it like that. Think of your pre-listing email as highlights of your listing presentation, because really you want to show up to that listing presentation, um, you know, knowing or hoping that they've already chosen you, right? Because you've already shared value with them. You've already shared, uh, you know, a, a partner list that you have. So strategic partners, vendors that you work with, you know, that they'll have access to at a discount because they're working with you. Uh, you might have a checklist for them. You definitely should have uh, a roadmap of what to expect when selling their home. So uh, a great thing that I do like to include in the pre-listing package, really this is just an email that you're sending before you actually attend the listing presentation, is give them some homework. Ask them to, you know, compile some of their documents that they need. So, you know, you're going to need to see their tax assessment, you know, ask them to get you a copy of their key so that you can show up with a lockbox. You can put that on the uh, front door or in the stairwell if it's a condo. And uh, you already have that key ready to go, right? To, to start the, the paperwork and get showing started as quickly as possible. If you show up to that listing presentation and they have these things ready, that's a pretty good sign that they're really motivated. So that's why it's a good idea to give them homework because it's a good clue uh, if you show up how motivated they are if they have these things ready for you. So that's the power of a pre-listing email. I won't call it a pre-listing package. Um, but yeah, definitely if you don't have the sales yet to kind of showcase, do have maybe a seller's guide, something that outlines the process so that again, they know that they can, they can trust you because you're knowledgeable. So sharing something of a seller's guide, which, you know, I focused on before in other presentations, you can find it in the Academy or reach out to me if you'd like some samples, but yeah, eventually getting to the listing presentation. So this is available to you uh, on the Academy as well, but I will just quickly highlight, um, you know, having a listing presentation that you do bring with you both printed and online so that you can talk about the process, you know, what they should expect, uh, you know, talking to them right now, because it is a seller's market about the options of holding off on an offer date or accepting preemptive offers, right? So talking to them about that. Uh, and then definitely bringing with you all the things you need to secure the listing. So do not forget if you are showing up to a listing presentation that you have a listing agreement with you, right? You want to wow them. You've already prepared them, right? Hopefully they already have selected you in their mind when you sent them that pre-listing email. Now you're there, you're in person, you're sharing the information, the process, the comparables, you're deciding on price. If you don't have that listing agreement with you, right? The chances of you walking away and then changing their mind is greater than if you had that listing presentation right there in front of you. So make sure that you do bring the listing agreement for them to sign. As you know, you also need an MLS data information sheet. That's part of the, the process. That's part of the package that you'll need, but that is a long, tedious form. So, you know, that one you can prepare on your computer, just let them know, you know, sign the listing agreement. I will send you the MLS data information sheet separately. You can sign that electronically. That gives me all the data I need to input into our MLS system. Um, but yeah, as I said, it will follow later. So at the very least, bring your listing agreement. Um, the FinTrack working with a realtor, same thing, you can prepare those later after the fact, um, but the, the real takeaway here is bring the listing agreement. Uh, okay, so can you please email the link of guidelines to us? Yeah, let me know what guidelines you are referring to, and I will definitely send that to you. If you're looking at what forms are necessary, when you go into Trev and uh, into web forms, you would select the the listing template. So one of the common questions I get about this is you want to create the listing template and then it asks you for an MLS listing. So just leave that blank. Don't select the Toronto Real Estate Board as your board. Uh, just leave that blank as well and that will allow you to generate a um, listing template kit in web forms. <laughs> and then you can go ahead and complete the listing agreement, print that out. Of course, you're going to leave the price blank. Um, you know, you might leave the date blank because, you know, you'll want that signed in person. So if there are other guidelines that uh, you're looking for, let me know. Uh, for selling process, yes. Okay, great idea. So Breakthrough Broker is something that I always recommend, breakthroughbroker.com. Uh, they have a couple of seller guides, one page roadmaps that you can share with your clients 
in that pre-listing email and definitely at the time of presenting your, your listing presentation, bringing your listing agreement to the property um, because it's, it's a great, it, not only is it a great visual for them, but it keeps you on point to kind of go through all of the tasks or all of the, uh, the steps. All right, yeah, Johnny, go ahead, talk to me. I see your hand is up. I can unmute you or you can unmute yourself if you'd like. Um, okay. Johnny. Okay, I got it, I got it, hi. There you go. Hi there. And I just wanted to know how, <clears throat> You know, you said you pay $5 and you can find out the square footage of the house. Yeah. Uh, I just need to know how, how you do that. Oh, you have to go yeah. to the geo, geo warehouse. So that's actually in property line. So pull up, you can pull up any property and then you just click on property line up at the top. Okay. Uh, it's best if you're, if you're of course coming from the subject property, but you can search for properties in property line. Um, so yeah, pull up the subject property in MLS and then click on property line. And then you'll see that there's there are two boxes and you can choose either the detailed report or just the floor area report. Okay, okay, yeah. thank you. Thank yeah, you. No problem. And yeah, to answer a question in the chat, why not choose the Toronto Real Estate Board? Right. So when you are creating a, um, a, a transaction kit in web form, if you're looking for the buyer, then you are selecting oh, yeah. the Toronto Real Estate Board and you're selecting the MLS number, right? Because it's going to pull information from that MLS number so you can prepare your offer. But it's different when you are preparing a, uh, a listing agreement because there isn't an MLS number already created for that property. Um, and even if you try to pull up an old one, it's it's going to show up as an active, it won't work. So you have to leave the MLS number blank, which means you also have to leave Toronto Real Estate Board blank. If you say Toronto Real Estate Board, it's going to want you to enter an MLS number. So you have to leave both of those fields blank. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. How are we doing for time, everybody? Whew. All right. Good questions. We've got about 10 minutes left. So yes, your listing presentation. Uh, do you have a listing presentation ready? There is one available to you in the, uh, in your CRM, but it's a PDF. There's, uh, it's, it's a little bit outdated. It still talks about, you know, the fact that we have 2 million visitors. Well, we're now we almost have 12 million visitors. So yeah, take some information from there, but just make sure that you're entering updated information in your listing presentation and Breakthrough Broker. Again, I just recommended that you can recommend some, or sorry, you can download some templates for your listing presentation there. Um, I won't talk about that, but uh, let's talk about featured properties. So if they are, if you're at that listing presentation and they're asking, why should I work with you? Why should I work with Zolo? Uh, definitely talk to them about the traffic. We have 12 million visitors. So any realtor is going to show up at a listing presentation and they're going to say that they have buyers. And it may be true. They may have a handful of buyers, but there's no way that they can compete with the power of the Zolo website. We have almost 12 million visitors every single month. So all they need to do is type in Toronto. And if their property is in Toronto, their property is going to be listed as one of the top recommended properties, right? Because the Zolo website is going to recommend their own listings. So as you can see, it's not on price point. Uh, this was a real search, Toronto. Three properties came up that were featured. Um, and then yeah, you can see one was priced for 940, 385, 279. So just as long as they're listed with Zolo, they will be featured. All right. So definitely uh, talk to them about that. Commission always comes up. A great line that I'd like to share with you guys is if you are getting commission objections, you know, uh, will you reduce your commission? I know that, you know, a lot of listing agents do, and that's, that's fine. Maybe Use your negotiation skills here to maybe offer a discounted listing commission if they also commit to buying with you, right? Because then, you know, maybe you list for 1.5 instead of 2 or 2.5, but then, you know, you get the commission on the buying side. So have both agreements signed at the same time, that listing presentation that you brought with you and the buyer representation agreement so that there's no misunderstanding that they're going to use you for both. And then if they're really, you know, well, 1.5, what about 1? maybe transition the conversation. So it isn't about you. It isn't about your commission. It's more about them. What's more important, the commission that you will pay or the net proceeds that you will receive at closing. Let's talk about what you need, right? And there are some tools again online where you can pull up, um, you know, the province, your expected commission, 
Um, and then of course, what, uh, what they will receive if they sell for a certain amount of, of money. So if they say, you know what, well, we would love, you know, at least 450, 500, whatever it is. Okay, well, if you list for 500, these are your legal fees, these are gonna be your closing costs. So you will receive 471, right? So you can work with them on what they need to net to justify and include your commission, right? So it's not gonna come, it, it comes out of their pocket, but it doesn't come out of what they need. All right, so just a couple of takeaways there with commission. And again, don't forget to update your CRM with all of these activities because the Zolobot loves listing presentations. <laughs> so if you can say that you're out there, you're doing listing presentations, definitely highlight that in the Zolo CRM so that uh, the Zolobot continues to give you leads. All right, so there's lots to talk about here about marketing a property. I am gonna skip this for now just because we have a few minutes left. What I do wanna just jump into is the MLS section because uh, here at Zolo, we upload our own listings. So we have to make sure that we have the proper paperwork. You want to go into web forms and we do have a tutorial on the Academy of the paperwork specifically, but you must have your listing agreement. You must have your MLS data information sheet that will be prepared in web forms. And once everything is signed, you, you can then create your listing in TREP, right? Which means that you are adding it manually. There is a bit of a shortcut when you are in web forms and you're in your MLS data information sheet, there's an upload button up at the top, which creates a draft in TREB for you. So you don't have to copy type all of that information. So that's available to you as a little bit of a shortcut. Again, it creates a draft listing. You can review it and then you can go ahead and, uh, and post it, right? With your photos, you can upload photos, upload attachments, but all of that information that's in your MLS data information sheet is automatically uploaded. So that saves you a ton of time. Um, okay, so like I said, I'm going to skip over the marketing and I'm just going to show you um, the, the forms. Staging, marketing materials, just sold, just listed. Let's talk about MLS. <laughs> so how to upload your paperwork. This is the listing agreement. Um, and then as I said, you can upload that uh, directly from web forms into TREB. Um, yeah, your MLS listing. So another cool thing that I, uh, or another important thing that I want to mention is that if there are going to be any changes to the listing agreement, just because you have access to it doesn't mean that you can just go in there and change the price, right? If you've had a conversation with your sellers and they say, okay, yes, let's increase it, let's decrease it, that's not enough authorization for you to actually go ahead and do that. Even though you physically can, you need the paperwork. So get them to sign an amendment to the listing agreement if you're making any changes, um, and then you can go ahead and, uh, and, and do that in trap. So just a really important step there. All right, so offers, I will leave that as well uh, because we did just do a recent, uh, actually we did a few recent webinars where we talked about multiple offers. One in particular was with Mustafa, so I think that was at the beginning of April. So uh, if you want to catch up on any of those previous webinars, they are in the YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and just type in Zolo training, you'll see all of our previously recorded uh, sessions, including multiple offers. So I'll leave, I'll leave this one there because I really wanted to focus on the CMA while still giving you a good overview. If you are new to real estate, if you're new to Zolo, you know, what do you need to know? What are all the things? Um, and again, I mean, this could be honestly a seven week series, <laughs> but we've kind of highlighted the need to know stuff in one session. So um, let me know if you have any questions. And it looks like I do have one. So if no square footage is shown on property line, do we have to buy additional report? So do we have to? No, you don't have to. It's not a mandatory field. Uh, in my opinion, it should be a mandatory field, but it's not. So no, you don't have to buy it. Um, I've actually purchased that report. Again, it's $5. I've actually purchased that, you know, when preparing an offer for a buyer. If it's not there and the listing agent doesn't know, it's $5. You can inform your client and say, you know what, it's it's actually 2,200 square feet, right? So um, again, I think it should be a mandatory field, but it's not. So no, you don't have to buy it, but it's good information to have. Definitely, if you're on the listing side, I would spend the $5. All right, let me know if there's anything else you guys wanna chat about. I will stop sharing my screen so that we can just have a conversation. Um, let me just see here and stop, share. All right. So we've got a few more minutes left here. 
Let me know again if you guys want to chat with me. You can raise your hand. I can unmute you. Uh, but hopefully this was good information for you guys. Does the Academy training have listing presentation step-by-step -step guide? Yes. So I did that um, a few weeks ago. So what I normally do, what I try to do in, uh, in the YouTube uh, channel is I will say working with sellers and then I'll put in a little description of what we highlighted. So today I would say working with sellers CMA um, and there was one that was working with sellers paperwork where I really kind of did the step by step, um, you know, filling in all the forms and web forms. And I believe there is one that was all about the listing presentation. So yeah, definitely take a look there. And if you can't find it, reach out to me. I'm happy to help. All right, let me know if there are any other questions. I think I have a quick survey here that I can pull up. So for those of you who are still with me, let me know uh, what you thought of this training. If you have any other suggestions for future training, please let me know if there's, a, if there, if there's ever a piece in the uh, working with sellers or working with buyer process that you would just like me to focus on, I'm happy to do that. So let me know what those pieces are and we'll just talk about it. <laughs> All right, thanks for answering the poll, you guys. I'll leave that up for another minute. And in the meantime, yeah, talk to me. Awesome. So yeah, I'll leave the survey up for another 30 seconds. I appreciate the input. Again, you know, reach out to us, let us know what other training you're looking for and we will introduce it. So we'll roll it out. <laughs> All right. Oh, I love the answers coming in. All right, technical trainings. Yeah, let me know specifically what you're looking for. Um, if, you're, if you're looking for web forms, we do that on Wednesday. Uh, I'm writing this down, though, technical trainings. If there's anything in particular, we did Matrix last week also. Um, Mahir joined us on Thursday, and uh, he basically walked through, through Matrix and different tips and tricks there. I learned a few things. So yeah, definitely join us for those. And uh, soft scale training. OK, awesome. Perfect. Great. Okay. Well, I will end the poll there. Thank you, you guys. And um, thanks again for participating. And I will see you guys on the next webinar. Have a great day, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.